This golf putter robot is one of the best Arduino and 3D printing projects that I've seen anywhere. And uh, I wanted to help anyone that might want to create this. So I created three videos, an introduction and a part one and part two, uh, to help anyone who might want to uh, go through this project. This was designed by uh, Greg Zumwalt, and he has the complete build on instructables.com. And we'll show a little demo of my version of this working here. Now I did a number of mods from Greg's original design based on just going through it. So I wanted to list them here for anyone that might want to take advantage of them. I have these mods available on printables.com and you can see that in the description. Greg used a IoT33 Nano, which is quite a bit more expensive here in Canada. You can probably use just the basic Arduino Nano. I used an Arduino Nano every worked fine. The servo choices might be a little difficult. I use the same ones that were used in the original design, uh, and they're shown here. They're an SG90S. You can use uh, a Metal Gear servo, uh, 9G, they work well. One of the problems, though, is that in the STLs, you'll see there's a 25T design uh, for the servo horns or splines, but the servos that you'll get are likely going to be 21T or 20T. So in part two, I go over how I sort of adapted that to work, uh, what I think is a little better. I added some test code in the initialization and uh, the uh, Arduino sketch is given uh, and, and you're freely will able to modify it. But adding some test code in the, in the initialization routine helps uh, when you're testing your servos. I found a couple tools are really necessary. One is this 8mm tap. You'll find that there are plastic screws with an 8mm thread and when they go into their uh, receptacles you'll find that it, the thread is too tight and you must ream those out with a uh, 8mm uh, tap. Uh, and you can get these fairly cheap on AliExpress. I also found uh, some really nice small rasps uh, on AliExpress and these are actually fingernail files. They're really necessary because if you notice here this wire does not, there's no cutout so when it's flat against here it bulges out a bit and you'll need to insert these servos in a couple very tight holes and if you try to force them in with this wire sticking out here you may damage and pinch the wire so you'll need some files perhaps to enlarge uh, the holes a little bit. The original design used a 6mm steel ball, but I had a 7.1, it didn't have a 6, and it worked fine. You'll notice that uh, the orientation for some of the parts I had problems with and that I'm pretty clumsy and I broke the legs off uh, the junior robot at least a couple times. So I oriented the part differently, it needed support, but had a lot better strength. So if you need better strength in some of the parts, just reorient that and I go over that in one of the videos. I used a little different uh, rod. Uh, the original design used I think a 1.5 millimeter brass rod. Uh, I found that when I tried to make some small uh, kinks in it actually broke. I used about a one millimeter thinner steel rod that I just got at the dollar store from a, an old steel whisk. And that seemed to work actually better. And also the rod I used was about uh, five millimeters shorter, five or six. And uh, I'll show the uh, actual dimensions I used in, in the future videos. The original design powered all the servos uh, through the nano unit um, and I was a little worried that if a nano, if the one of the servos uh, stalled that it would burn out uh, a diode or something in the nano so I used a little different design to power it. I show that in the first uh, the first video. 
The flag came as an EMF for Cura. I don't use that slicer, so I cut it into two parts uh, and provided two SDLs. And you can actually glue these together. You'll want three colors. You'll want black for the pole, black for the number, and white for the flag. So having it in these two parts makes it easier to do that. And you can insert this and uh, you can screw it together or you can just glue it together. I also provided an STL for uh, the putter uh, as well. And the putter you can uh, print in two colors just by layer. And as I say, these mods are available on the printables.com uh, website in the description. This was a, an absolutely excellent uh, model. and took me probably a week, uh, week to make. So if I were going to build another, what other mods might I, I do? Well, one of the things here is I glued, the legs are glued on as one of the final steps, but I had problems with the servo uh, splines in here slipping, and so it's really hard to get at if you do glue this on. I'd probably add eight magnets, maybe modify the parts so you could just unhinge this really easily. As I say, I had problems with the servos slipping and, and connecting really well. These servos are really precise and they're hard to get a good attachment. Uh, the servo horns, which actually come with the servo, such as here, will fit really well, but they're machined with very little tolerance, tighter than you can get from FDM printing. Uh, one of the things you might want to do is use one of these servo horns and then you could modify a part, a server spline, to go around it to sort of grab the spline uh, in a way that if it had to turn 180 degrees, it wouldn't hit this wall to the left side. So you could incorporate the actual server horns, but it would need, mean modifying some of the parts here. The green, uh, I would try to make it removable. If you need to get underneath, it's quite a, uh, and you glued it down, pretty hard to do some, uh, some troubleshooting if you had to replace anything. I just laid it flat without any glue. My power solution, the way that I did the power, I had a cube adapter with a USB cable that went to a 5mm plug, power plug, and it just plugs in the back. But it makes programming changes very difficult because you've got to lift up the green and uh, snake out the little board, put in a, a USB plug. If I were doing this again with my power solution, I'd maybe try to mount the board next to the wall with a little cutout so I could also plug in a USB cable if I needed to modify some of the plugins. So that's really all. There's, uh, as I say, really an, uh, just an excellent, uh, uh, an excellent project and it was a lot of fun to build.